Well, seems like I can't just can't get enough of this truck. I got everything put back together. Like I said previously in the video, this is a frustration of mine because I started this job just to do the oil cooler and then I broke the timing cover. So I did the timing cover. And then when I did the timing cover, I ended up having to pull the turbo and then doing a whole bunch of other stuff, pull the oil pan. Finally put the oil pan back on, test drove it, truck starts, drives, good to go, come back and the back of the oil pan's leaking. So, these trucks are not designed to do the oil pan in the truck. According to Ford, you're supposed to take the engine completely out, flip it over, use their special Magic Pixie RTV, put it on there, let it sit for 24 hours, flip the engine back over, and install it. And really, you're supposed to install the engine with the cab on. But what we're going to do, what I'm going to do, is pull the oil pan off with the engine in the truck. And I bought a, um, I looked online and I saw some reviews for this Moroso oil pan gasket kit. It's supposed to be a pretty, pretty skookum kit. It comes with a nice thick rubber over a gasket and it's even got these steel inserts in here to make sure you don't over compress it. It also has um, studs. So you put these studs in the block and use those nuts to tighten it down. And when I put the nuts on, I'll put the little RT or Loctite on them. So I guess total I'm about $700 into this job that I originally quoted him $200 to do. But oh well. All right, so let's get started. So to get the oil pan out, you have to unbolt the entire front cab. There's six bolts holding it in. Jack the cab up about five inches. Take the motor mounts loose. Jack the motor up about four or five inches. And then you can take the oil pan out. And it's a big pain in the butt. To get started, you have that bolt right down there. You got one there. There's one on the other side. You've got one underneath here. You gotta take this pillar, the seal plate off. Oh, I'm sorry, there's eight bolts holding the cab on. There's another mount bolt right under here. The back one's the easiest one to get to. There's one here and one over there. And I don't know if somebody's been into this truck before and that's why they're different, but the, uh, the bolt sizes are all different. So, like on this side, I think they're 21, 22, and then over there, they're like 19, and so whichever. So I'm gonna take those bolts out. Now to get to these bolts up here, this one's not that bad. You just get a long extension, get down to it. Neither one of them are that bad. You just get a long extension, hit it down there. I think they're an 18. Let's uh, verify. So yeah, 18 millimeter with a long extension. Gonna fire up the old compressor and use a half inch impact for it. All right, so they're 18 millimeter. Got that one off, got that one off. Next, take these front cab bolts out. I'll take these out, take the seal plate off. And the seal plate, I just took this off the other day so it comes off easy. And I got these little metal clips on here. Now, when you first take these off, these clips are going to be kind of a pain in the butt, so take a screwdriver, stick them underneath there, and try to pry up right where these mounts are. If not, you'll break the seal plate. Then on this one, take this kick plate off. There's this little piece, this little plastic right here. To move this, just stick your fingers behind here and then pull like that. That's what that guy's looks like that's what you're trying to pull out so once you have that out then your kick panel will pull right out your kick panel has these clips in it too so now we can get the carpet up so move that guy out of the way pull this guy out of the way and now you got these rubber plugs so again I've pulled all this stuff out once so all this stuff is going to come out a whole lot easier than when you're doing it on your own. Take that plug out, set it down, 
that's the bolt we're after and i think that's a 21 or a 22. let's find out go grab some seconds let's see all right this is metric this bolt is metric down here but a 15 16 is so the same as the uh 22 i believe got the socket on there This one on the back is pretty easy to get to. I think that one's the same size. Now there's a trick to getting this one. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this bolt off back here and the bolt off up front and then I'll show you the trick to getting the back. All right, so I got the bolt out back there. You gotta take this seal plate off. That was right here. Pick your floor mat up. So to get to this one, you got one of two options. Either you take all the seats out and you take your carpet out to get to it. Or, and you see that plug right there? So pull that plug up. Take your socket. Put it on top of your bolt down there. Now, if you take a razor blade, make a small cut into the carpet just a straight cut you know, like that you'll have a little access hole there and if you do it right once you get done you won't even know what's there <clears throat> all right so you poke it through like that now this one actually has some floor mats in the back so it'll hide it a lot better but even if it doesn't once you get done with this if you go over the, the spot that you cut and kind of massage the carpet a little bit you'll never know it's there so got your socket sitting through there put your impact on start my compressor again my compressor has a pretty cool anti-theft system on it so turn it to run all right it won't start so yeah <laughs> to do that to the same three bolts on the other side all right so this is what i'm talking about this side over here a uh 13 sixteenths and the other side is a 15 sixteenths i don't know why the difference but 13 sixteenths for this side all right so we got all eight cab bolts out and just a word of advice before you lift these cabs you make sure you have all the doors shut and the reason why is because the center of the cab the cab really isn't meant to have any force as much as we're going to put on the front to lift it up. Now, it'll be fine. You know, it, it, it's okay. It's not going to bend anything. But the problem is if you leave the doors open, the whole cab kind of flexes just a little bit. And instead of being like, you know, the door being square like that, it'll be just like a sixteenth of an inch. And you'll have a hard time getting your doors to shut for a little while. So if you shut all your doors, your doors help with the rigidity of the actual cab itself. So now we're going to jack up the cab um, with that floor jack and a couple of blocks and put some spacers in it and uh, hopefully that'll give us enough room. All right, so right underneath the front of the truck, this is the part that you want to lift up on and you can see that uh, you had to put some blocks in there to get enough room for this. So all you do, now if you are going to use this many blocks, you got to be careful because it's kind of you know it's, it's not sturdy so as you lift it up you know don't get your hands anywhere underneath it in case the uh, uh the jack falls but what we do we're gonna jack this up you can see that opening it up so the cab's raising and the engine's not So the one thing you do have to worry, look out for is this fan clutch. This fan clutch, um, if the fan gets in the way, then we'll have to um, take that fan clutch off. But <clears throat> I 
So as you're jacking this up, you're lifting the cab, you're not lifting the engine. You need to lift up until we clear that stud down there. I'm getting too bad of a glare, I can't really see what I'm doing. Yeah, you see that stud right down there? Once it clears, we can stick a, a two by four in there and set the cab down on the two by four. I got the cab up and um, you wanna get a two by four, you know, just a little short length. I just had some of those scraps laying around. You stick it right in here like that, okay? Just like that. You see it right there. So what we'll do is we'll set this down a little bit. And then the whole cab, the front of the cab at least, is sitting on there. It's sitting on those four by four blocks now. Or two by four, excuse me. So that should be high enough for the cab. Now we need to get the engine up. And it seems like I, I remember that being high enough. We'll find out. Um, to get underneath it, uh, we need to take the four nuts off for the motor mounts and then jack the motor up. And um, I'll crawl underneath there and do that. All right, so now we're underneath the truck. You've got engine mount bolts or nuts on both sides. You got one there, one up there, and then the other side looks the same. And they are 21 millimeter. So the best way to do these um, is just use them by uh, hand ratchet. It's up there pretty easy. Once you break them loose, they usually come off pretty, pretty simple. And these are well oiled up, so that helps. All right, so I'm gonna pull those off. Well, next step, we need to drain the oil, and this is a brand new oil with some um, uh, oil added that I put in there called um, uh, Hot Shot. It's a stiction eliminator, and I'll, uh, I'll go in details about that in another video. But drain the oil. I bought a brand new pan because I'm saving the oil, and we need to remove the oil filter. And I'm gonna obviously save the oil filter because it's brand new, but your drain plug is a three quarter drain most of it out and um, once the bulk of the fluid comes out then just put the plug back in you don't have to sit there and let it drain till it stops dripping all right so got our wood blocks in there both sides they're just right underneath that motor mount um now technically you want to use a four by four block to get the engine up high enough i don't know if i have it up high enough i think i'm gonna have to lift the the, the cab up a couple more inches gain a little height on that so i get the engine up higher but we'll see um i just did this while ago or uh, a couple weeks ago and you pretty much have to have enough space to where you can from right here you can see the bottom of the oil pan if you can see the bottom of the oil pan then the oil pan will come out but now We've got all these 10 millimeter bolts around the, bolt, the oil pan itself. We're going to pull all those out. And uh, I'm going to pull them out go ahead and get the pan out. But just FYI, if you're doing this and your pan hasn't been uh, either, it's never been off the engine, or if you're doing it and um, uh, someone's actually reused the 4 epoxy RTV uh, magic stuff, then the pan's gonna be on there. It's gonna be stuck pretty bad, and you're gonna have to uh, uh, really pry it off. So you got to get a little chisel or a screwdriver on the side, and then just kind of start breaking that seal. And it's gonna take you a little while, but you get it done. One last step before the pan actually comes off, you need to take this dipstick loose. So go ahead and pull the dipstick completely out. Take a 13 millimeter right there. All right, so the pan's out, and the places that it was leaking was right around here, up here, on the, all the corners. Now, I put plenty of silicone on there, but it looks like silicone didn't really attach to the uh, engine side very well. Maybe I didn't clean the engine side good enough. So this side looks good. What you want to see is you want to see that constant flat... marks on it but for whatever reason probably when i put it back in 
I probably hit this area up here with something and didn't realize it. From prying it off, I need to straighten that pan back here. But... Well, I'm gonna get this cleaned up and we'll start putting the studs in for the new gasket. All right, so we got the oil pan off, oil pan cleaned up. I didn't film it because eh, you guys can figure out how to clean RTV off of a maintenance service, use a wire brush. And uh, anyway, so to put the new oil pan on, we got these studs, all right? So all you do is you grab these studs. Dad, so if I can, can do this one-handed. Can we say hi? Yeah, yeah, hang on, buddy. So screw these studs in by hand. As far as they'll go. And that's it. They don't have to be torqued down. They don't have to be anything special. If you want to get crazy, you can put some uh, Loctite on them, but it's not necessary. But go say hi, Caleb. Hi. I'm going to be hoping. Yep. My good mechanic helper. All right, so go around and put studs in all the holes, and then we'll put the old pan back on. So like Caleb just pointed out to me, these studs... I guess uh, they go in a certain way. They go that side goes in towards a block. Done, Dad. That Allen right there. Put a little Allen wrench in there, and you can tighten them down. You want to put the next one in? You do it like this, not like this. Since I'm like, when I tried to do this, it wouldn't walk. Like I was like this, and it wouldn't walk. Oops. Like so, like this. We know that. Well, after a brief intermission of lunch and a good little nap, I'm gonna get back to it. So, got all the studs on down in there. And uh, just FYI, those little studs on the bottom of them are 5 30 seconds Allen to sink them up into the block. Got those synced in. Gotta put this down there, grab the oil pan, and uh, marry them. Now, one thing. What you want to do this is what the instructions say to do is there's these places where the covers meet right here i'm gonna pull a little rtv there an rtv right in this little crevice so there's four of these and then right there and that's kind of a little added measure of uh insurance to make sure it doesn't leak so I'm gonna go ahead and get the oil pan and then uh, put that on and start tightening her down. So I got all the bolts tied all the way around. Now the spec on it is 12 to 15 inch pounds. I think 12 foot pounds. Let's do it by hand. Um, you can over torque it if you try, but there's these little those little metal inserts that I was talking about are on the gasket. Prevents you from sinking them down too far. So 
once you tighten them down you feel it stop then you know just a little german good and tight you're good so now i'm going to put the uh, uh 21 millimeter uh, engine mount bolts back in and then we'll jack up the body and we'll take the uh blocks out and start batting it back down got everything back together all i got to do now is the cab mount bolts put my dipstick back in fill it up full of oil and ready for testing so i'll get that all put back together and then we'll fire it up well everything's buttoned up i just started it up it starts up idles check the oil it's a little bit low uh, just fyi a small gatorade bottle makes a pretty good funnel screws right in there so i'm gonna fill it up full of oil and we'll go on a test drive hi. say hi hi now say it like a man go hi Well, the Ford is finally done. So, a ICP sensor and oil cooler repair turns into a timing cover, two batteries, turbocharger reseal, several oil changes, two oil pan, one RTV, uh, Morosa oil pan gasket, Total expenditures, I don't know, six, seven hundred dollars. So that's it for the 7.3. Got any questions or comments? Comment below, hit like, dislike, subscribe, and get out next time.